In this video I'm going to show you how to make a moving platform using the new sequencer tool in Unreal Engine. I'm using 4.13 at the moment. Um, I'm going to start with a third person template with no starter content and I'm going to call it uh, Movers as the project name. So once this loads up, um, we're going to set the project so that as the character um, walks on the level, they can get onto this platform and be lifted up and down by it. Um, I'll also show you how to set it so that a trigger box can be used to start and then potentially stop that sequence as well. So once the level loads up, uh, you'll find that uh, you've got the standard default level and I'm just going to add a cube into this level and I'm going to put my little moving platform just along here. I'm just going to rescale it to make it more platform like and position it where I want it which is just there. Remember you can also change the snapping properties if you find that uh, it's not going quite where you want. Something like that should do. Okay, so once you've got your object, make sure you set it to movable. And we're going to create our sequence. So choose cinematics and add level sequence. And I'm going to put it in a folder called sequences. And I'll call this sequence platform. And click save. Now there is a system. Uh, in UE4 called Matinee, which is the older animation system, um, but the sequences are the newer version. Um, you'll see that um, that Matinee was uh, was listed in that uh, list earlier. Um, so once you've got your um, sequence platform icon, which is just here, it's this clapperboard icon, just find out where it is because sometimes it kind of hides it inside of other objects. So just find where it is and place it in a handy position nearby to where your uh, platform is. With the uh, platform selected and if you open up your sequencer window um, you'll find that uh, it's a window that can be docked and placed around. It often comes up as a floating window but it's useful to have it docked down here uh, at the bottom where your content browser is. And Normally you can click with the object selected you can click add add to sequencer and it would normally give you a list of, of the object and various other objects you can add. Um, for some reason it's doing some slightly strange rendering as you can see. Um, that may be due to the fact that I'm running on a laptop with a, a Optimus graphics card setup that cause, causes problems somehow. Um, but anyway there's another way of adding them so just drag from the world outliner you can just drag them in like so and you'll see that um, the cube which I've got selected there is is visible and the transforms that are available location, rotation and scale and you can see you've got the X, Y and Z uh, for location. So the sequencer works a bit like this so you add um, a keyframe initially so we're at frame 0 at the moment we're going to add a keyframe just by clicking this thing here and then we're going to move this playhead along to about frame 100 and we're going to move our platform up to where we want it to go around about there and we're going to add another keyframe and you'll see this yellow dotted line appears that kind of illustrates where this platform is headed um, if we wanted it to come back down again we'd have to add another keyframe at around about frame 200 now you'll see that we can't actually get to frame 200 at the moment um, what we need to do is just drag this little working range end just past the number 200. That means we can kind of scroll along here and we can see frame 200 there. And I also find it helps just to move the working range start just slightly past frame 0 the other direction so you've got a bit of room like so. You can also scale this view so if you want to get some real kind of fine details frame by frame you can zoom right in like this or you can zoom it right out and see the whole sequence in one view. Um, so to get it to come back down you could move the playhead here and pull it back down to where it started or a slightly better way is to hold an alt which will then duplicate the first keyframe 
and we'll just hold down Alt, drag it across and that will duplicate and put it over there. Now if you currently press spacebar which is the play button um, or you can click play down here um, you'll find the platform goes up it will come back down again but then it will stop when it gets to this frame 150 here and that's because this red bar here indicates the amount of sort of playable um, area on the timeline so if we drag that red bar we can just fill it up to frame 200 and similarly you've got a green bar here for the start which you can adjust before or after frame 0 but I'm going to leave it on frame 0 for now so this time when we press play you'll see that it goes up and it comes all the way back down just as we intended now you might think that perhaps it doesn't go high enough you want to change that and the um, your kind of intuition says you should maybe drag the playhead here go to frame 100 and select the keyframe perhaps and pull him up but what, what you find is it doesn't actually work like that um, what you need to do is go into the transform and actually manually adjust the um, the Z here because if you do that if you just move it in the viewport it, it doesn't actually work you see it, it just snaps back down again so move the playhead to exactly the frame you want you'll find the Z is there once you move that Z value just dragging you'll see that it works quite happily so that's how you kind of modify things um, you can also do something called auto keying um, where you can turn on here so you can use auto key all which basically means anything you, you add to your level will kind of automatically be animated as you kind of move it around which is probably not what you want most of the time you can auto key animated which means that anything that's already been added to this timeline will get altered as you move it around which might be useful in certain circumstances so in this case perhaps uh, at frame 50 we want it to have a slight diversion to the side um, so with auto keying on you'll see that it's added that kind of sideways bit of sequence to it so you can create a nice kind of loop like so and then you might also decide that on this side he wants to kind of go more that direction you can see that again it adds that kind of nice sort of circular motion so that, that's a possible option. Now if you decided that that wasn't to be, then you can click on these and, and hit delete. Um, or if you've got multiple multiple frames, so for example if I wanted to move him also in the uh, in the x-axis, um, you'll see it's added another keyframe down here. You can actually do a little marquee select just by dragging across them and hit delete to get rid of them. So we're kind of back to back to how we were with our up and down movement so that's fine for now I'm going to turn off the uh, auto keying at this point just so we don't accidentally um, move things around on the animation so that's disabled um, okay so let's uh, let's try and run it and see what happens now what you'll see at the moment is nothing happens it doesn't move at all so what we've got to do is set this to auto play so find the little clapperboard icon and then find the autoplay setting under details turn that on and also you might want to turn on loop indefinitely so it continues to move up and down the whole time as you can see now that's exactly what it's doing we can step on that platform and it'll move us up in the air perfect What if we wanted this platform to be triggered by the player kind of walking into a box? Um, well that's pretty straightforward to do. We can add a box trigger and I'm going to place my box trigger just at the top of this ramp here. So he has to go up there first, set the trigger going and that will then trigger off the, uh, the animation sequence to run. So let's just line that up so it's nicely there. And we just need to turn off the auto play. So just find that little clapperboard, turn off auto play there. Obviously, we don't want it playing automatically. Um, and then we're going to just do this via the level blueprint. So click on blueprints, open up your level blueprint, 
you need to create a overlap event for the trigger box so just click on the trigger box there type in the word overlap and make sure context sensitive is turned on begin overlap is what we want we also need to create a reference to our uh, sequence so select the clapperboard again type in the word oh, sorry just actually just choose the um, create reference to platform that word platform will be whatever you've changed whatever you call your uh, sequence and from that we need to first of all get a reference to the uh, sequence player so just drag off and choose get sequence player that gives us access to the sort of mechanisms that that is play and stop the, uh, the sequence itself and then just drag off the sequence player type in the word play and you'll find play and play looping which is kind of useful there's also a play reverse but play looping is good because it will continue to loop um, over and over again so just make sure the final stage that you link up the trigger box to play looping just compile to check it runs and uh, once you've done that uh, we'll give it a go you may just want to turn on the visibility of this so where it says actor hidden in game just select your trigger box and just untick that so that you can actually see it in the level whilst you're playing just to make sure it's in the right place so platform static at the minute we go over here and the platform starts moving that's it for this tutorial hope you find that useful